Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, Joyous Daughter of God. My name is Amy and today is June 14th, 2020. And I hope everybody is having a wonderful and blessed day. Um, I know I'm just, I truly am. I'm truly grateful for the weather that the Lord has blessed us with. It's been a nice treat. It's been like fall-like weather here and sometimes even, well we are in spring, but sometimes where it feels like we're actually getting spring weather. But um, today I am going to be reading to you all Jeremiah chapter 7. And so I'm like, Lord, what it, do you want me to share right now? I have something that I'm working on to Lord willing to do a video. I don't know. Another one maybe sometime within the next week or two. Um, but right now I'm like, Lord, what do we need to know? You know, what do we need to know? And, you know, I heard Jeremiah 7 in my spirit. So, I'm going to be reading Jeremiah chapter 7. Um, I hope you all can follow along um, in your Bibles with me. And I read from the New King James Version. So, that's the translation I'll be reading from. Um, and if you're not able to follow along at that very moment, I encourage you, if it is uh, put on your heart, for you to go read Jeremiah 7 yourself and allow Holy Spirit to teach you and give you the um, understanding of what the Lord wants you to know for yourself. Um, but as I was just reading this, I'm like, wow, 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 wow. If this is not America right now, then I don't know what it is. Um, just so much that's going on. It's like, I just see it, you know, whether it's in the world not in the world it is in the world i mean in the church um the different stuff that we see on the news daily and that people have actually seen with all the different protests because of like some the injustice that's been being done it's going to mention innocent blood being shed and we see that constantly like not just people taking people's lives for no reason um but the shed of innocent blood with people aborting the babies killing little children you know we see so much of this innocent blood shed in america we see where like in the churches where so much i mean there are still good churches out there don't get me wrong but we see there's so many where it's twisted and wicked and to where their doctrine truly doesn't line up and how they teach with the word of god or we see some will just use the scriptures to manipulate the flock, to manipulate the congregation into giving them money and, you know, for gain. It's they put it more so all about them. They'll manipulate you with the scripture to try to make you feel guilty. So therefore you'll give to them or where they think that they make it seem as if um, you need to pay them for a blessing or a word. And that's not the case. The Lord will give you the word and what he wants you to know if you just ask him. All you do is have to ask and pray and seek. You might not get it right away, but if there's something you truly want to know, we have to keep going to him and asking him. And I understand sometimes we do get impatient or... We just give up. And we're like, oh, I guess he's not going to answer. And we just give up. We shouldn't do that. I mean, we just shouldn't. You know, God's timing is his timing. And he'll answer us according to, you know, his timeline. But then we always have to remember. We always have to remember in Jan Daniel. Daniel, um, I believe chapter 10. um let me check because I don't want to give you guys the wrong, um, you know, chapter just in case you want to check it yourself. Let's see. <laughs> yes, Daniel chapter 10, you know, where he prayed. And God heard him the first day. But remember, it's like the principality 
of uh, Persia got in the way. And then there was, you know, where Michael and the other angel, they had to fight. And so 20 days later, so it was a full 21 days before Daniel received the word. But God heard him on the first day. But there was all that spiritual warfare going on for him to finally receive the word but you see daniel persisted he didn't give up he waited and let this be a reminder to myself and to you as well who's listening never give up on the lord never give up on what you're seeking and praying for for he will answer you but we have to be aware and alert that God might answer us in a certain way, in a subtle way, that sometimes we miss it. Or he'll answer us, but because it's an answer we don't want, we'll be like, God never answered us. So we, you know, we have to be careful. We have to understand and be open to the way God works and how he will answer us and give us that answer um, to our prayers. But we need to be patient. And as we're being patient, we need to be persistent. Oh, yes, this is talking to, to me. But anyways, um, but this, Jeremiah chapter 7, I'm reading, I'm like, America. Like, everything that's going on. And this is, you know, stuff that's probably going on in other countries and nations. But I live in America, so it's like, I see it, like, clear-cut um, America. So... Before I get going on reading, I'm going to um, go ahead and pray and then go forth. And when I start to read, I'm flipping the camera around. Um, so that way, because I'm just going to be reading. So at least you can see greenery. <laughs> All right. Uh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for this wonderful day that you have blessed each and every one of us with. Lord, I thank you for this time that you have given me to be able to share your word. And that right now, Lord, that we can freely read your word out in the open. We can freely share your word. Because, Lord, we won't have this freedom too much longer. So right now, I just give you all glory, honor, and thanks for this time that I have. That I don't have to be fearful of or worry about someone just coming around to my backyard and taking me because I'm sharing your word or reading it. But Lord God, right now, I lift up all the saints, the brothers and sisters in Christ overseas who go through this each and every day, Lord. You know, where it's illegal to carry a Bible, where it's illegal to speak your name out loud, to where they could be thrown in jail, they could be um killed um uh, persecuted well they're persecuted lord so i just ask that you be with them and let us over here and all the other countries where we still have the freedom to openly you know share the gospel to read the word to carry our bibles let us not take it for granted but let us remember our dear brothers and sisters in christ the saints overseas who do not have that same freedom how but they're willing to die for you jesus they're willing to die for the word they're willing to die to proclaim your name but i just at and be thrown into jail but right now lord i just ask that you be with them and that you encourage them and strengthen them lord i pray that you remind them that it is not worthless it is not hopeless that they have a great reward waiting for them in heaven lord i just pray give them that strength to carry on and to endure allow their faith to be built even stronger and stronger lord give them the remembrance of the brethren who have already gone before us who is in the bible that we read about the Pauls and the Peters and Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, you know, the prophets, the great prophets, how they were persecuted greatly, how they were thrown in jail, how they were martyred, but they counted it all joy because Jesus, to die for you is gain. You know, to give up our life for you is to live. 
and they know that and they understand it but i still ask that you protect them and be with them and guard them and watch over them and provide the provisions that they need and allow them not to lose hope lord i pray for your peace to rule and reign in their hearts and their spirits and their minds and their souls lord god i just ask that you allow them to be able to for you know continuously forgive the ones who persecute them and lord i pray that your light and your love shine so brightly through them that it pierces through to those persecutors and that they lord come to know you jesus as their personal lord and savior because they see and they they know that you are the real deal lord that you are worth dying for that you are worth getting to know and to follow after and that they want what they have and lord i just ask that you bless this message i ask that it be pleasing unto you lord holy spirit i pray that allow your words to be spoken through from my mouth allow it not to be me that they hear but you that they hear holy spirit and i pray that you just guide this video in the direction that you wanted to go in the mighty name of jesus i pray and thank you amen okay so here i go jeremiah chapter 7. hold on the the word that came to jeremiah from the lord saying stand in the gate of the lord's house and proclaim there this word and say Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place. And the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it, because of the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear, and I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, I will do to the house which is called by my name, and which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, the whole posterity of Ephraim. Therefore do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or prayer for them, nor make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. Do you, see, do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the shame of their own faces? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury will be poured out on this place, on man and on beast, 
on the trees of the field and on the fruit of the ground, and it will burn and not be quenched. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat meat. For I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this is what I commanded them, saying, okay, this is what we really, we just need to listen to this and truly have ears to hear, eyes to see, and just listen to the Lord our God. And remember, um, obedience is better than sacrifice. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. And that is exactly what is happening in America. We keep going backwards instead of forwards. And it is so sad. Especially what we've been seeing. Here lately. And evil hearts. The evil is just coming out in. A lot of people's hearts. We're showing a lot of people's true colors. I mean we see like. In these protests. Yes I understand. It's like where we want justice done. And, you know, so the people will peacefully protest. But then you have these other people who take advantage of the situation. And they start rioting. They start damaging property. Stealing. And did we not read where it talked about stealing? They start stealing and looting and... um, Catching things on fire. Now what does that really prove? What does that honestly prove? That just shows their wickedness in their hearts. And their evil in their hearts. That they're going to take an unfortunate situation that happened. That people are trying to get justice for. And they're going to take advantage of it. And do wrong. And think that they can steal stuff and loot and they have every right. No thank you. No you don't. None of us have a right to go steal. We don't. No matter what has happened. Or catch other people's property on fire. You know it's like lawlessness is abounding and we see it crazy. I mean even amongst all this stuff that is happening in this world. I don't know about you all but where I live it's like through the protests when we have curfew. Murders were still happening. Domestic violence was still going on. But so many people couldn't get the help that they needed because so many people were acting foolishly by vandalizing stuff. Catching stuff on fire. People trying to rob different places. You know. And the list goes on. It's like murder shootings. Keep happening on a daily basis here. It's like the evil hearts of all is just showing. And we just see in this time and age. That you know. Good is evil and evil is good. And people really don't want. The true God. They don't want the true Jesus Christ they don't want to follow and obey the commands and what the Lord has shown us in his word we do not forgive others we harbor ill will we are bound by so many people are bound by strongholds there's such a great spirit of hatred That runs deep. And it just needs to be broken off. Protests yes are fine. But the only way. The only way. That people will ever truly have true peace. Is if they receive Jesus Christ. As their personal Lord and Savior. And he forgives us. You know every one of their sins. And delivers us from the strongholds. 
the generational curses, any evil and wicked spirits that may be upon us, and some may be even demon-possessed to where those need to be cast out. But don't you people, don't pe I'm sorry, not don't you people, but people just do not see and realize that it is a spiritual warfare going out, that there is so much behind what we see. Okay, so what we are seeing with our physical and our natural eyes, there is more going on in the spiritual realm. And see, we will not know these things if we are not spending time in our word, reading the Bible. If we are not spending time praying and talking and seeking and asking the Lord the things that we need to know for him to show us, to give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment of the times that we are in. If we are not doing these things, we are going to be clueless you know for in Hosea it talks about my people perish for lack of knowledge and so many people perish because they don't want to know the truth they want to close up their ears because they don't want to hear it because they don't want to be accountable for it so now we see this we see America has kicked out the true God the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob they have kicked out the true Jesus and what the Bible represents and how he is because so many people don't like it we've pretty much kicked them out we're about to as i see where the police might end up saying you know what why why should i try to defend anybody anymore because everything we do is going to be scrutinized people's going to come after them yes you know there are bad cops but there's good cops as well. We just don't see it because we always focus on the negative and we never like highlight the good. The negative always gets highlighted. And don't people realize who runs this world? Satan? Do people, do people forget that there's an arch enemy out here named Satan, the devil, the adversary? And that he hates mankind. And that he wants to see everybody go to hell with him. But we tend to forget about that. We tend to forget about that. That there is an adversary. And he's just running wild. And you know, there's some things honestly that he doesn't even have to do because we do it for him and he can just sit back and relax on some issues and that is so sad it is so sad but we really need to truly open up our eyes our spiritual eyes to see what is going on in this world around us and to know that it is more that meets the eye we have to look beyond the situation really have to look and ask the lord ask him he will tell you he will show you but all you have to do is ask you know it's the racism it is prominent i'm not saying it is legit it is legit and you would have think you know we should have moved forward from that but we've gone backwards it is it is pretty great out there and it's sad it is truly sad that people treat other people differently just because of the shade of their skin color or where they might have um their nationality comes from or what country of origin they're from it is truly a sad thing when we are all god's you know creation and we could all be adopted into his kingdom as children of god if we receive jesus christ as our personal lord and savior and we can be called sons and daughters of God. But we are his creation. We're all created. 
in his image. So it's just sad. It is really sad. And we even see, we see it in the churches. We see segregation in the church. So it's still in the church. There is such a stronghold and deep hurt that needs to be released. It's like it, it's that deep. It, those chains need to be broken off in the mighty name of Jesus. There is power in Jesus' name. There is power in his blood. You know, and he is the only one who's going to give that true healing. That true deliverance. And to where people can live in love and peace with one another. Because, you know, God is love. And if we don't know the Father and have Jesus dwelling in us, then it is truly hard for us to really grasp that true love. You know, and that's something that I believe I and all of us, we need to ask the Lord, help us to love like you love us, Lord. You know, because we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love each other. Love one another as ourselves. We're to love our neighbors. We're to love our neighbors as ourselves. So we, you know. I know I need, you know, more help to be with more and more love to be able to love my neighbors you know to where we're just we're just able to love like okay if someone does you wrong you can forgive them and you won't hold on to it and just let it go but I will continue on now uh, verse 25 since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent to you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Oh, we are doing so worse than our fathers and our fathers before us. Hmm. Therefore, you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not obey you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. So you shall say to them, This is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and cast it away, and take up a lamentation. On the desolate heights. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, says the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. And how are we similar? Abortion. Abortion, abortion, abortion that America has. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when it will be no more when it will no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hanam, but the valley of slaughter, for they will be, for they will bury wait. For they will bury in Tophet until there is no room. The corpses of this people will be food for the birds of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will be frightened and no one will frighten them away. Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. So, let us ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to know? Show me, Lord, the things that I need to know and be made aware of 
so that I may always be prepared. Lord, examine my heart and show me any wickedness that may be found in me. So that way I can ask for forgiveness and it may be put and that it may be placed under the blood and washed away and it remembered no more. Lord, give me the knowledge of the things that are going on and the discernment to understand them. The discernment to really see what is going beyond the pictures that they show us on the news or in the newspaper. Lord, open up my spiritual ears so that I can hear what is really going on and that I can hear your words clearly. Lord, forgive this nation for the many abominations that we do on a daily basis against you. Forgive us for the sins and the stench that just rises up to your nostrils. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for kicking you out, God and Jesus, and thinking that we can run things on our own. And that we've replaced you, God, with a different God and you, Jesus, with a different Jesus. Because we don't like a lot of the things that your word says. Saints, we just all need to be ready and prepared. And we just need to all grow closer and closer with the Lord our God. Allow him to build, you know, build our faith up, our faithfulness in him up. We need to make sure that Jesus is the true shepherd, the chief shepherd that we're listening to and that we're following. And let everybody else were be a confirmation of what the Lord has spoken to us. Time is short. We all need to be ready for when the Lord returns. Whether it be the rapture or it's our time to go. May we all be ready. May we be holy and blameless before the Lord. May our garments be without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. May our hands be clean without blood. Oh yes, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, please wash any blood off of our hands that we have that we are unaware of. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Sometimes we do not know that we've committed them. Lord, forgive us for those thoughts that pop up in our head. Words that we spoke that aren't pleasing unto you. Lord, help us with what we struggle in and deliver us from our strongholds. In your mighty name, Jesus, whatever the strongholds may be, break them off of us. Sanctify us each and every day, Holy Spirit. Sanctify us more and more so that we can be more like Jesus. So that when people see us, they see you, Jesus. That they know that there is something different about us. And remember everybody, what I speak on these videos is for me as well. And something that I need to remember. We need to be ready and stay ready. Let us not take our full armor of God off. And help and ask the Lord to strengthen our armor that we have on. Like if we're struggling in the area of our faith or our salvation or, um, let's see, the gospel of peace. Like, you know, if we're not very peaceful or to give us more knowledge of the word. Um, yes, we need to know more of the word because the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So we got to make sure we're in this word getting it into us so that we know it. 
so that it can not only be our defense but our offense as well and we must know this word because we got to remember that the enemy knows it as well so don't let the enemy use the word of God against us and let us know because the enemy will come at us through other people you know to argue the word so we have to be aware and watchful and we have to know the tactics of the enemy because remember we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against um principalities you know spiritual hosts wickedness the demons the chief rulers of darkness but remember this the enemy will use flesh and blood to come at us so we got to remember that as well <sighs> but let us be ready let us be ready now there's the part in here it's like you know everybody take this word i mean it's the word of god but take it you know to the lord yourself and ask him to truly you know the holy spirit to teach you what you want to know because there's things in here that i believe the lord himself needs to really show us and direct us you know, if there's someone out there that he just doesn't want us to pray for any, to pray for anymore, let him let you know, us all know directly. But until then, you know, keep the people in prayer. Unless the Lord says otherwise. Okay, you all, um, I'm just going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. Uh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just thank you for your word. I just thank you that you, Lord, are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forevermore, that you change not, and that your word is living. I thank you for what you show us in your word so that we can see the things that are going on before our very eyes. That we see Bible prophecy, the things foretold that are happening. Lord, I thank you that you give us your word to help us to get to know you better. To be a guide for how we are to live and on what we are to look out for and to be prepared for. Father God, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you just forgive us for these many sins that our nation commit. Forgive us of our sins and the sins of this nation that we commit before you on a daily basis. Forgive us for the abominations and the stench that rises up to your nostrils. Lord, I just pray that everybody awakens their eyes to see the evil that is behind things that they deem okay. Lord, uh, forgive us for kicking you out. And Lord, I truly pray that people welcome you back in. For our time is short. How short? I don't know. Only you really know. But I just know that time is short. And that we need to get ready. Lord, you love us so much. And you do not want to see any perish but all come to repentance so lord right now i just pray for those prodigals that they return back unto you lord that they come back father god the ones who are lost and who have never known you lord i pray that they are found that when you are knocking on their hearts lord that they open up the door of their hearts to you and let you in Lord, I just ask that you be with each and every person who's hurting. You know what each and every one is going through. Father God, I just ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you reach it down and just touch them and heal them. And allow them to feel your 
love flowing through their hearts. Lord, I just ask that you strengthen each and every one out there who needs to be strengthened. Give us your strength, O oh Lord. Renew our minds. Renew our spirits, our soul. Lord God, be with the saints. Be with the body of Christ, Father God. I just ask that you be with them and strengthen them. And allow them to know what it is that you want them to do. Guide them. Protect them. Provide the provisions that each and every person needs. Lord, you see that hurt, hurting sister. You see that hurting brother. You see the one who is let down to their last dollar. And Lord, they might not even have a dollar, but only cents to rub together. Lord, I ask that you provide them those provisions that they need right this minute. Father God, in your mighty name, Jesus, I just pray that their prayers be answered and that you bless them with the provisions that they need. Whether it be food to eat, their light bill paid, with electricity paid. The mortgage, the rent, the car payment, whatever it may be, Lord, whatever they are going through. May you give them those provisions that they need. Lord, the ones who are hurting because they have lost loved ones. Whether it was instantly, whether they knew it was coming. Whether they were taken away from them. Father God, be with those who are hurting. Allow them to grieve. But then, Lord, I ask that you heal their hearts. Mend their broken hearts, Lord. Bind up their wounds. There's so many who have wounds out here, Lord, who has been through so much. I ask that you bind up their wounds and you heal them. Restore them and make them new in your mighty name, Jesus. Redeem them, for you are the great Redeemer. Lord God, I just lift up the youth. Oh my goodness, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, be with this youth. Lord God, they are broken. They are empty. They are filled with so much void and they don't even know it. So they try to fulfill it with this, that, and the other. But they are missing you, Jesus. So Lord, I just pray that they turn away from this world and that they turn unto you. Allow them to have a hunger and thirst after you, Jesus, and allow them to gain a true relationship with you. Lord God, I ask that you be with each and every boy and girl, man and woman out there who is being sex trafficked. Lord, I ask that you deliver them from that prison of hell that they are in and what they are going through. I pray that you set them free, Lord. I pray that all those operations be exposed. I pray that you, Holy Spirit, convict the captors and allow them to see what they are doing as wrong and evil and wicked. Lord, I pray that the sex traffickers be set free in your mighty name, Jesus, and allow them to be delivered from all the emotional hurt, the physical hurt, the mental hurt, Lord, and I just ask that they are become a new creation in you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray, yes, let justice be served on those captors. But Lord, I pray that they come to know you. I pray that they come to know you. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray for each and every person who comes across this video, Lord. I pray that you be with them. You know what they are going through. You know th their struggles and their hurts. And their situations. And Lord, I just pray that you just reach down and meet them where they are. I pray, Lord, if they are struggling in their faith, that you increase their faith even more. Allow them not to doubt. When they pray to you, Lord, allow their prayers to be in true faith without doubting, knowing that you can do it and you will do it according to your will and your purpose. 
Heal them, Lord. Provide them with the provisions that they need. Heal them physically where they need physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, mental healing. Lord God, just be with them and allow them to know your love and your peace and fill them up with your joy. Allow the, your joy to be deep within their heart for the joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord. And so many people need your strength, Jesus, because we cannot do this thing called life without you. And Lord, I just pray for all our love lost ones. I pray that they just come to know you, Lord. And Lord, I put my children in your hands. And I pray that your will and your way be done with them. And Lord, again, I just pray that this video was pleasing unto you. And Lord, I just pray that we all have the ears, the spiritual ears to hear the spiritual eyes to see, and the spiritual heart to receive. Show us the things that you want us to know, Lord. And I thank you and I praise your wonderful, glorious name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, I just hope each and every one of you have a great and blessed morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you may listen to this. Take care.